You want some RTF NFS? Are you trying to sell me drugs? No, I'm talking about the Rudy Tooty Fresh and Fruity. Oh, I prefer to get grand slammed. Ew! This, this is, is a hot dog, dog is a sandwich. sandwich. Ketchup is a smoothie. Yeah, I put ice in my cereal, so what? That makes no sense. A hot dog is a sandwich. A hot dog is a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> what? Welcome to our podcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich, the show where we break down the world's biggest food debates. I'm your host, Josh Sher. And I'm your host, I guess, Nicole Anaity. I guess. I guess. You didn't like my joke? Um, the Grand Well, no, Slam I just feel joke? like you should explain to people Women... what getting Grand Slammed oh. is. <laughs> it, means, it means going to Denny's and eating breakfast. Yeah, so it means when you go into the Denny's bathroom, right? And what you're going to do, you're going to slide your foot underneath <laughs> the bathroom stall, and then that way, the Rudy Tooty Fresh and fr- No, that's IHOP. Um, yeah. Today, Nicole. What's up? We're discussing the two biggest pancake juggernauts in the entire game. Not only are they pancake juggernauts, though, but they are family-style, diner-adjacent restaurant chains in America. Uh Uh-huh. And those words mean something, I swear to you. Yeah, one of them is an international house of pancakes, and one of them is not. Ironically, both of them are they both of them are lowercase international houses of pancakes, right? Yes, of both of them have several international locations, not a ton. They're both in like maybe the the low hundreds or, or high sure. two digits. Um both of them have somewhat equivalent numbers in America. Mm-hmm. Denny's is about fifteen hundred, IHOP is about nineteen hundred, and their wow. revenue is yeah, this they're a lot closer than I thought. For some reason, I thought Denny's was bigger than IHOP. I consider Denny's to be more ubiquitous than IHOP. Really? Yeah, do you? I think I think I, I, I guess I don't travel much, so I see a lot more IHOPs. Or maybe my eye is just geared towards looking at more IHOPs. Whoa. I don't know why. I just think it's I think the iconicism of IHOP versus Denny's is like obvious to me at least. I always said the opposite where I thought Denny's was what? a lot more iconic. You know what I think it is? Why? I think it's growing up with an American boomer dad. I didn't. I grew up with an immigrant father. That's funny. So, like, I think I came at this from uh, a whole different perspective because yeah. Denny's Denny's started a little bit earlier than IHOP. Denny's started in 1953 in Lakewood, California. Lakewood's like you know, around like the long, corner. It's like South LA. Cir- okay, so so you're going you so you're going to um, Mar Vista, but you make a left. But yeah, but it's south too, right? So I don't you think make people, a right. I don't think people care about the I have the, no idea where Lakewood is. I'm it's sorry. LA. It's LA. It's LA. Denny know. started in LA in 1953. It was mm-hmm. originally called Danny's Donuts. Was it a donut shop? Yeah, it was a donut and coffee shop. No way. Yeah. And you know who Danny is? Danny Palumbo, former sports <laughs> employee. <laughs> Danny DeVito. No, nobody knows who Danny is. They just named it just Danny's because it was a name, It's a right? good name. There's a lot of Daniels and Dannys in the world. There sure are. And they probably wanted an That's all American name. name. That is, I forgot, You're I Danielle. forgot I have it. Do you ever forget Dan- you have a middle name? Miriam? Never. Mir- I am no, Miriam. No, Miriam, you do not forget. I am Miriam till the day. I, that was supposed to be my real name. Did you know that? No, it was my in parents very Hebraic. Wanted, my parents wanted to name me Miriam or Mariam. And then my sister's like, no, we're giving her an American name because there's a pretty girl in school named Nicole and we're going to name the baby after her. And what are your siblings' names? Sanam and Salar. <laughs> <laughs> Sanam, Salar, Nicole. Yeah, that's And me. I'm Nicole. The American baby. <laughs> uh, so anyways, they eventually changed their name to Denny's in 1961 because there was another spot in LA just called like Dan's Coffee to go. Sure. So there's like nothing behind the name. Five years later, 1958, is when IHOP opens. So they're pretty close contemporaries. You see this big boom in chain restaurants after World War II. Okay. Right? So you get uh, In-N-Out is starting at the same time. Taco Bell is starting at the same time. McDonald's. But this is like the fast, casual version. Yeah, I'm sure when it first came out, it was like a big deal, like to get coffee and pancakes at like a franchise place. 100%. And they started started franchising super super quickly. Um, In 1981, so like 23 years, they reached their thousandth location. Denny's? Which is crazy because right now they're only at like 1,500. So Denny's had a super fast boom, which makes sense why I consider Denny's to be the Mm, juggernaut because my dad grew up going to Denny's. And did you go to Denny's with him? Oh my God, all the time. That's Right? Because it was... Kids ate super cheap, right? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Denny's does that like, it's like seniors and young people, like under six or something. You eat free for if you're under five or six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And I, they probably have like a veteran discount. My dad had that sure, too. Sure, sure. You know, so it, Denny's was the ultimate like boomer dad comfort. Mm-hmm. And I even remember when Denny's in the early 2000s was trying to like rebrand some of its locations mm-hmm. to be like a 50s style diner. Mm-hmm. And so to me, I have a lot of fond memories of Denny's, but... IHOP is really the juggernaut. I thought IHOP was the underdog in this situation. They That's are not. That's so interesting. They are not at all. They have IHOP, 
Uh, about cheese and rice, three billion dollars in sales in 2021 is the data Pretty we're going off of. Damn impressive. Denny's about 2.5 billion. Though. Not far behind. Followed very closely by Cracker Barrel. Cracker Barrel is the third, Dude, but we I, we didn't really grow up with Cracker Barrel. I've never. Okay, let me tell you. I've never been to Cracker Barrel. I never went to what is the old Spaghetti Factory. <laughs> I, I don't never, think they're in the same echelon. No, dude. yeah, they are. They're all like these like I know what you mean like, though. Cool, like not cool. And they're like, kind of themed. They're like iconic Americana restaurants. If like you're in a small town, like I don't know. Is Akron a small town? Akron. Is Akron, Akron Ohio. Is, is it a small town? Y- like, it's probably pretty big. Me- Maggie, Google how many people are in Akron. Okay, I'm going to take a guess. Know. I'm going to say, I'm going to say 220,000. Oh, 190,000. so close. 190,000. I'm pretty good at this. <laughs> that was incredible. Okay, what about, Can- okay, Canton, Ohio. It looks like it's lower. What's Canton? Probably like 60? 70,000. 70, okay, yeah. Canton, Ohio probably has. Where the NFL Hall of Fame is. No way. Jim Thorpe. Maybe the greatest athlete of all time. He played all? for the Canton Bulldogs. I don't care. Oh, they you have You don't care own... about Jim Thorpe? I don't care about sports. Dude, he was a Native American hero. Wow, really? He won gold medals in the Olympics, okay, but so then he I had to care. give back the gold medals because he played like professional, semi-professional baseball. Oh. And when they found out, but people think like, yo, if he was white, it would have slid. Um, that's, I wrote if a book report on... If you play two sports, you can't get into the Hall of Fame? Until like 1992, you could not... What about Michael Jordan? Until 1992, you hmm. could not be in the Olympics if you were a professional athlete. It was only amateurs. No way! Yeah, and there's still certain sports like that. Like, I believe boxing is that way in the hmm. Olympics. Okay. So if you're a really good boxer and you want to win an Olympic gold medal, you basically have to forego your pro career. I had... N- that is insane. So 1992, Why? I'm pretty sure... It's because of like unfair advantages? No, it was like to uphold the sanctity of... Blah, blah. Stupid. Uh, 1992 was the first time, I believe, that... So all of the uh, basketball players for the American Olympic team used to be college kids because they couldn't get paid at the time either. Mm-hmm. 1992, first time they let the pros in, and that is oh, when yeah. Michael Jordan, Charles Barkley, the whole freaking dream, dream team. Dream team. I know about the And they team. kept one college kid on just to be like, uh, here's in Christian Leitner, bleh, useless. Everyone hates Christian Leitner. <laughs> okay, let's talk more about like things that I know and Go like ahead, about. Sorry. I'm okay. so sorry. Like I got said, caught up. So, so at small the, town America. America. Small town America. They have these cool restaurants like Old Spaghetti Factory and Macaroni Republic. What is it? There's like a macaroni store. There's a macaroni store. That's what it's called. <laughs> yeah, they call it ye, ye Old Macaroni Store, and store is spelled with two R's and an E. <laughs> yeah, like I like that stuff, and I feel like living in LA, I never got to go to those like small town things. Which sucks, but I feel like IHOP and Denny's are the closest things that I got to experience. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Yeah. And um, I've been to several Cracker Barrels because I used to go to like <sighs> to Allentown, Bear. Pennsylvania. They I think I went games. to one. Don't they have a cool game? The Peg game? Yeah, they do. They do. They have little board games. They have a little country store. Uh, I love Waff- board Waffle games. House is in a distant fourth place with one point two billion. Never in sales. been to Waffle House. I went to one in Aurora, Colorado. It was okay. Very strange. Um, oh, what time did you go? Probably like 11 a.m., pretty hungover. And okay. the server comes, my only Waffle House experience. We we ordered the house. We got it flipped, flopped, chopped, dipped, whatever the Goops, chunked, hung, scooped, scooped, scooped and scooped <laughs> on the on the hash browns. We got every kind of waffle they had, which was like two kinds of waffles, just like normal and pecan. I'll never okay. forget the server came and just threw a bunch of forks at our table. Through. Like straight up through. Like un, like unwrapped, mm. no napkins, whatever. And we're like, I don't really care. Ouch. Okay. Yeah. And then um, she comes by holding two burnt waffles and they go, they burnt your waffles. Is that okay? And I just went, uh, yeah. <laughs> and you ate the burnt what? waffle. And I sure did. And I ate all the what? other food. And it was fine. I love me some loaded hash browns. But then a cop came to the door mm-hmm. and he just goes, hey, has anybody seen a mentally disturbed teen? And we go. And the whole table raised their hand. <laughs> <laughs> no. We go, no. And they go, all right, watch out. They're roaming around. And then walked what away. the heck? Very Waffle House experience. Anyways, um. I go to IHOP more than I go to Denny's. <laughs> Why do you think that is? Availability or do you actively prefer it? I don't ha- So when it comes to, to going out for whatever kind of food this is, what kind of food would you consider this? This, this is, it's not breakfast like fair? quite diner food. I, I guess I, you'd say diner food, but diner, like. Diner, breakfast, fair, Americana, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it's, un- it's unfortunate. I don't find myself attending either of these places anymore. What, what do don't. you go for in that? Like a local diner? Yeah. If I go to a diner, I go to like a random crappy one next to LAX, P- Pans, Pens. It was yeah, great. Pans, it was, it yeah. was delicious. It's not crappy. I don't know why I said crappy. It was very good and I loved it very much and I can't wait to go back. But like I try to go to like more small like places in LA that aren't necessarily mm-hmm. corporations. But do I, if I'm like driving around and I see an IHOP, I'm going to stop at an IHOP more than I'm going to stop at a Denny's. Yeah, no, same. I have always very actively preferred IHOP, and there's, like, a very specific reason why. Hmm. It's the syrups? 
Oh, the syrups. The syrups are one, but I think the syrups are symptomatic of the larger um, reason. And that's just IHOP to me when I was a kid was always more Epicurean. They had more, like it's Tell an international what Epicurean, means. Epicurean meaning like having an evolved taste in food, an adventurous palate. Yeah, and Josh read books when he was like, eight. Or <laughs> IHOP. I, Nicole taught me what dilettante meant today. I had a completely different yeah. definition in my head for what a dilettante was. Nicole, tell me what dilettante means. Um, a dilettante is someone who like just very surface level appreciates the arts yeah. and like other things, but doesn't like go in depth. Something like a dabbler. A dilettante is a dabbler. Uh, now, what is the Rizzler? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but you're so skibbity. <laughs> oh, and God, that's all I, I know that. about that. Is I that ha- a compliment? Saying skibbity? I don't know. I don't want to live anymore. It is I don't on this. Live here anymore. I just what do you don't mean want you don't want to live anymore? Chill out. I don't know. The kids. No, but it's one, changing so Josh, fast. Josh, I said one word. The kids Why do you are wanna, changing the the, the language. Change it so fast, and then it's going to change. And then I'm just there's no monoculture anymore. You know what I mean? You can't reference. I could like say a line um, from a, a sitcom ten yeah. years ago, right? Yeah, say and it. people know what it is. Say it. I would just say like day man, and then somebody uh, would respond, yeah. fighter of the. Night, man. Oh, uh. You can't do that with any piece of media anymore, and it sucks, and I hate that, especially in people who operate in pop culture. What I'm saying is IHOP, mm-hmm. they had like an international menu of pancakes. You had the normal menu of pancakes, uh-huh. and they had the international menu, and they made like Swedish lingonberry crepes. They made like, uh, or, or no, Swedish pancakes, they called them. And then they had like... Um, blintzes. Do they have blintzes? They had blintzes. That's they had pretty blintzes cool. on the menu. That and they the had menu. all the flavored syrups. So they had yeah. poisonberry, they had strawberry, they had maple, and then the greatest syrup of all time, butter, butter pecan. pecan. <laughs> Did you say pecan or pecan? I say pecan. I say butter pecan. You know pecan is actually like a native, it's an indigenous word? So is pecan proper or is pecan proper? It's it's probably neither. It's like the, you know, the film festival, I'm going to pronounce it properly, can? Uh-huh, the can film can? festival, yeah. Yeah, the can film festival. The can? What about people, it? I, I had an argument where people are can? like, they're like, it's can. And some people are like, no, it's con. And I'm like, no, the French vowel sounds are just different. There's no proper, the only way to pronounce it is in French, which is can. Are you even going to mention that I'm holding two pancakes? Nicole's holding two pancakes. Okay, right now I'll tell you this much. I'm sorry for fondling the cakes, but I had to. The IHOP... Feels like mattress foam. In a good way, right? In a good way. It's like springy. It's 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 bouncy. Mm-hmm. It feels like they whipped egg whites, but obviously they didn't. And the Denny's one, a little bit more flatter, a little bit more sturdy, and more like a flapjack. More like a flapjack. What's really interesting. So let's talk pancake for pancake. Okay, I'm right? going to drop um, them, okay? Go for it. Even if IHOP, to me, they have the more decadent menu of pancakes. You can get the New York cheesecake pancakes Those right here. Those are fancy schmancy. I love it. Right here, we have the Mexican tres leches pancake, not to be confused with the Guatemalan tres It tres happens a lot. It happens a lot. I'm it's tired of it. It's a plague in this country. I agree. Stop. Um, but if we're just talking pancake for pancake, this is, let's say, 50% fluffier than this. Very fluffy. You know what the crazy thing about that is? What? This is allegedly 50% fluffier than Denny's old pancakes. No I believe way. it was 2015, 2016. Denny's spent millions upon millions of dollars to completely redesign their pancakes. Okay, I'm examining this. And they promised inside. 50% more fluff because their stores were in decline. The revenues were in decline for at least a decade. And they were like, we need to wage war against the IHOP. And so they redesigned their pancakes, and they offered a new menu of decadent pancakes, which Mm. is why we have here, Nicole. Woo! It just looks like, it looks like this got grand (laughs) slam. I was going to say the same (laughs) thing. (laughs) Um, But this is our salted caramel. It's like looking into a mirror. (laughs) And a pancake (laughs) right here. So we should get into it. We should taste these. Um, I'm going to rip off a hunk. Yeah, do you want some syrup oh from the God. IHOP? You want IHOP syrup? Well, IHOP didn't give us butter, which I think is shady. I don't need butter on my pancakes. I've never been a buttered pancake guy. It's okay. like fun, but I'm I'm really there for the bread soaked That's in fine. syrup. That's fine. I shall follow suit. I'm going to smell the pancakes. I smelt them Denny's too. Denny's so much uh, artificial vanilla extract. It smells sugarier. Yeah, Denny's is just, uh, it smells like sugar and artificial vanilla. Let's try the, uh, wait, I forgot which one's which. I'm oh, no. There. Denny's pancake. Let's try it. There's a slight leathery chew to Denny's pancake, which I do really like. Can you give me the Denny syrup? That's probably... Thank you so much. Excess gluten development. Yeah. Which they probably agitated the batter a whole lot. Some people don't like that, but I love it because it reminds me of the pancakes I ate growing up. Yeah, home-style pancakes. No, opposite. Divorced dad pancakes. Opposite. Well, part of that... Married dad pancakes. Crust... No, they weren't married for very... I was only conscious for like one year when my parents were married. Um, what but, do you mean conscious? Like I, the spark of consciousness hits you when you're like two and a half, three. You weren't conscious when you were like a six month old, right? What? <laughs> Am I being crazy? Like when you're Maggie, when did you reach consciousness? Three. No, I don't know. I think well. What, I, what's your earliest memory? 
My third birthday. See? Yeah, I was uh, at my grandparents' house just having a good time. <laughs> How old were you? Uh, three and four days. See? That's oh, when you, you become conscious. Oh, she's being silly. She's BSing. Don't, Maggie, don't BS a BSer. Okay, okay. Next I... time you want to BS a BSer, why don't you BS each other and see how that feels? Do you know the reference? No. Oh, come on, please, Jane Lynch. Oh, it's from the movie you like, Role Models. Yes. I've never oh, seen it, Oh, the though. kids will never know it. Go ahead. You were saying? Um, so I tasted the Denny's and I tasted the IHOP. I will say the Denny's has a more... I can taste the leavening in Denny's more, which is mm-hmm. crazy because the IHOP is fluffier. IHOP is so fluffy, but... It airs on biscuity to me. A little bit. I can see that. If you look at the air pockets in the IHOP one, it's very synonymous with like a biscuit. Look 100%. at it. Look at it. It's I don't know if that's just like there's a ton of hydrogenated oils in there probably. Mm-hmm. So they keep the batter solid and thick so it mounds. Mm-hmm. But then when it heats, it sort of melts and like evaporates, creates air pockets. I will say pancake for pancake, I vastly prefer Denny's. Me too. Hot damn. Isn't that crazy? Denny's pancakes. But it does taste more like leavening, but it also tastes more like a pancake. The IHOP one tastes, it's it's the fluff factor is a little off-putting to me. This, the the IHOP pancakes taste like the Bisquick pancakes that my divorced dad used to make. Okay. That is a divorced dad pancake, but this is the Apogee. Meg, you look up Apogee, A-P-A-P-O. <laughs> A-P-O-G-E-E. This is the Apogee to me. Of divorced dad pancakes, whereas the Denny's one, these remind me of the frozen pancakes I grew up eating, but I do prefer the chew. I, I do. really like I that do. glutinous I chew like on the Denny's pancake. I like it. I like it. It's good. Like, it paid off. The millions totally. of dollars that they spent good absolutely work. paid off, dude. Good work. R&D. It works. Apogee, the highest point in the development of something. This is the apogee of divorced dad pancakes. What's apotheosis? Or apotheosis. She is not your walking dictionary. I kind of like this segment. She has a job. It's Apo- the same thing. Apotheosis, yeah, same thing. I was gonna, I was deciding between apogee or apotheosis to describe these well, divorced dad pancakes. Thank God you went with your gut. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck are you doing, Josh? Dude, I bitch slapped the SAT. Um, can I, I never say took the B my, word? I never took my SATs. What do you think I would get on my SAT if I took it? Uh, it was at a twenty four hundred when we would have taken it. Do you want me to give you the twenty four hundred score? What? It was out of twenty four hundred oh, points you... when we took it. We were in a weird period for like mm-hmm. three years. It was out of twenty four hundred instead of out of sixteen hundred. But I can what would you so like think amortize I would have it to sixteen hundred. What would you have thought I got in the same? Let's say out of sixteen hundred. So I got like if you average, I think I got like a fourteen hundred. Okay, and that's you good. You would have, yeah, you would have. I'd say like if you say twelve. Are, were you a good test taker? Um, I was a confident test taker. What does that mean? That's that's a no. That's the answer. That's <laughs> that's no, right? <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like you, if you ask someone, like, did you test negative? And they're like, I tested well. And you're like, what do you mean? What did you, um, you pee in the cup okay, well? I was an okay te- test taker. I was okay. Yeah, probably 1240. It's a good score. Yeah? It's a very Where good score. Where could I get in with that score? Brown? No, like Cal State Northridge. Oh, I hate you so much. I, I couldn't, you can get into, I couldn't even get into Brown with an athletic scholarship. Um, okay. I'm eating the dulce de leche. Okay, so. If you're ordering plain pancakes, they're typically coming on the side of your eggs with your hash browns, your bacon, etc. To me, if I'm going to a spot like this, I'm picking the dumbest pancake on the menu, <laughs> and I'm ripping them stacks. Josh I used to go to IHOP. Dumb bitch pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in my himbo era, and I'm eating my himbo pancakes. I want it just covered in a schleem of whatever the hell this Yo, stuff is. That's really. You good. think they're actually putting trace leches in here? You There's think definitely, they're taking all trace? I think. Um. Well, there's milk in the pancakes. <laughs> I guess that counts. Wait, these are shredding. It's kind of delicious. God, that's good. It's well, kind of delicious. Okay, the good thing is IHOP's pancakes are very cakey, right? The dulce de leche is mostly on this side here. Let me let me adjust the Oh, boy. I see the goo over here. IHOP's pancakes are very cakey, so it lends well to being soaked. Soaked. Yes, it is, it is proper soakage, which oh I God. appreciate. Imagine if they were just a oh. little bit warmer. Oh, God. We need a microwave on set. I literally, I literally, Josh, it's oh, getting a little it. ridiculous. I literally told Maggie this 20 minutes ago, right before we started the podcast. Why are we so similar? If no, your SAT score is better than mine. Why do you think we're no, so similar? No, you didn't similar? even take SAT, man. I'm <laughs> talking like imaginary. How far did you throw the shot put? I didn't. Um, <laughs> how many CDs did you make for your teacher so they'd pass, pass you? <laughs> I certainly did none of that. Uh-huh. No, I just shake my stuff in front of them. <laughs> um, 
All right, let's try the Denny's. What is this? Salted caramel. It's the salted caramel banana pancakes. No, I just told my teachers, like, hey, I'm not going to go to class. My life would be better served if I learned how to throw this ball farther. And they were like, but you need to learn chemistry. And I was like, do I, Miss Gaines? Like, do you really think I do? Okay, and she I'm was like, no. Salted caramel banana pancakes from the Denny's. What is this cream atop? I think it's a salted caramel cream. There's a heavy layer of cream. Mm. It just tastes like a creme pâtissier mm -hmm. <laughs> at the Denny's. You're getting that creme pat. Um, this looks more appealing to me. The IHOP pancakes dried out my mouth a little bit in a strange way because they do have that, like, very biscuity appeal to it. With a sip of coffee, though, it was great. Yeah, I agree. Let me, let me tell you, I do like, I do like it, but I don't love it. I like it, but I don't love it. You know what the problem is? Tell me. I believe Denny's has a better pancake recipe. I agree with you. You know what IHOP has? Better international pancakes. A freaking death wish. I'm they sorry. They have no fear. Nicole, this is a fearless stack of pancakes, right? Denny's is like, oh, I take our normal pancakes and put some bananas on there. That goes on pancakes. We'll put like a little cr creamy cream on it that almost tastes like salted caramel. And IHOP is like, we're going to soak every single pancake in the sugar milk, and then we're going to put caramel between all of them. Nicole, this has turned into one mass. And I'm into it. Same. This is now a loaf. If you refrigerated this, you could compress it like a muffalata and then just slice it, right, it's as really one good. cake. This is an utter fearlessness that, to me, IHOP has had for their entire existence that Denny's will always be trying to bite at their heels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Better totally. pancakes be damned. IHOP is out there just cooking. They're more like, innovative. They're more innovative. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 it's this childlike wonderment of putting whatever the heck you can on a pancake and making it good. I like that about IHOP. I will, I mean, again, Denny's, really good stack of buttermilk. Really yeah. impressive stack of buttermilk. I would love to give the IHOP Corporation Denny's pancake recipe. That's what we should do. Well, you know what they should do? They should just merge a little bit Ocean's of a merger, a little bit of an acquisi acquisition. We don't need &A. any more food companies to merge. Dude. I want a mer I want an M and A of IHOP and Denny's. Call it I Dubs. I <laughs> Uh No relation. Don't look up his old videos. Um, <laughs> yeah. Weren't you going to fight him? What? No, I was going to potentially fight in IDUB's Creator Clash, but then um, I hurt my back, and it's actually mm -hmm. a real bummer because I, I do want to get into boxing. It's really fun. Dr. Mike Varshavsky. Friend of the show. He fought IDUB's, and he beat the pulp out of him. Really? It was actually a really good fight, Hot. but Mike is so, what a Good handsome. job, Mike. Mike, now that he's not so here, strong. what a handsome, strong Mike, man. Mike, so strong. Like, actually one of the best people I ever talked to. And not so even, smart. I'm not even jealous. I feel nothing but compersion towards him. You're not him. jealous of him. No, truly. I'm just like, I'm glad people like you. Do you like normally you, feel jealousy? Not really. I'm, I tend to be yeah, less of a jealous person, more of like a compersive. I don't know what compersive means. Compersion is the opposite of jealousy. It's like you accept that somebody. Yeah, you sort of like admire the differences. And I really do. I've become much more comfortable. With myself as I'm I've so gotten proud older. of you. Good Thank job. you so much. Um, we need to Ocean's Eleven heist the Denny's pancake recipe to then give that to the chefs over at IHOP. <laughs> we need to assemble a you're crew. You're gonna go in a little box we and then you're to get, gonna pop out of the box we like that one. We need to get guy. Aquafina. You know she's a street hustler in Brooklyn. You know, and okay. don't ask her where her accents from. And she's out there counting cards. And then they recruit her. You know, or she's playing three three cut Monty. They recruit her. She she's the you know okay. whatever. Then we got to get a who else was in Ocean's Eight. I don't. Rem I haven't seen any. I only you seen never Ocean's watched Ocean's Eight. I saw Ocean's Eleven. I thought you were supportive of women. <laughs> I Megan, genuinely who else is in Ocean's am. 8? Okay, Sarah Paulson. And Hathaway loving well, Sarah Paulson. Well, there's so many women in this. Is Rihanna? that the point? Is this the women's episode? This was the all all women's uh, redux of Ocean's Eleven. Are you for real? Yeah, you missed it. <laughs> How'd you miss this cultural moment? <laughs> when was this? 2018? My problem with this wasn't this that... This is incredible. What a star-studded cast. I had... Rihanna? It was a very star-studded cast. And it was... I, I saw this movie. I just... What are we doing Can't tell here? you. I couldn't tell you about anything other than Ocean's Eleven. I watched Ocean's Eleven. I watched Ocean's Thirteen. Don't remember any of it. Is this where she goes and returns the stuff and then she's like, never mind. But she steals it? I probably... Yeah, yeah. In the beginning, she takes all of... Sandra Bullock, also known as Debbie Ocean, takes all of the stuff and she goes, can I get a bag for... Can I get a return in this? And she's like, oh, do you have a receipt? And she's like, no, I don't have a receipt. And then she's like, oh, let me just call me. She's like, never mind. Just put it in a bag for me. I'll take it. And she like stole like so much makeup. Women do be shopping. Am I right, Nicole? That's <laughs> the message of that movie. My problem with this is not... And I know I'm a, a white guy with a podcast mic right now, so I need to tread carefully. But my problem wasn't that. What's your problem? It was problem, all women. Then? My problem was... 
Scott Kahn wasn't in it. And Scott Kahn. Who's Scott Kahn? Who is Scott Kahn? I don't know who Scott Kahn he is. Played, he played Tweeter in Varsity Blues, and then he was one of the Ocean's Eleven. No, C-A-A-N, Maggie. Scott Kahn. Like Kahn. Yeah, it's like Scott Kahn, and like, all I needed was a little Scott Kahn. It's pronounced I needed, Kahn. <laughs> I, <laughs> Scott Kahn. Scott Kahn. I needed a skosh of Scott Kahn <laughs> in Ocean's Eight, and then I would have been in. Um, is he in all of the other Ocean's movies? I, God, I don't know. Most Def was in the oh. Italian job, not... I've never seen the Italian right? job. Is Most that, is is that Italian with Charlize job? Theron? Charlize Theron. Is that with Charlize Theron? Uh, yes, and Mark Wahlberg. And, um, anyways. Mark Wahlberg! Uh, Edward Norton or Giovanni <laughs> Ribisi? I, I got lo- him confused. Can I tell you my favorite actor of all time is probably Edward Norton? Is it is he really? Oh my God. American I love History to, X. American History X. Great movie. The one with Richard Gere where he plays, plays someone who's like unstable. Oh my God, what a film. What a film. I, um, I just love him. Who wins... Maggie, who wants to Oh, who okay, wins? who wins? If we're talking pancake for pancake. No, no, no. I know what you're going to say. Shut up. What? I don't uh, like your answer. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> what, do you take it away? Now? I don't like your answer. I know what you're brewing. Take it away. Okay, let me tell you. Denny's, you do a good job. You're beautiful. I'm into it. I love it. I'm going to come get Grand Slam there. It's fine. <laughs> but when, when, it, when it comes to an experience, I think IHOP takes it because of the A-frame. I love the A-frames. Mm-hmm. Almost none of them have the A-frame anymore. I love, I love the vibe. I think, I think I love walking into an IHOP and, you know, someone gets country fried steak. I'm and the someone. someone. And someone gets hash browns and someone gets pancakes and someone gets Rudy Tooty. Like, I just, I just think it's more of an American icon mm-hmm. than Denny's is. Although I love Denny's and I appreciate Denny's and what they've done. Mm-hmm. And that one time there was a punk band that was like, what the blank is up, Denny's? Like, those are iconic. They were a punk band. They were a hardcore yeah, band. Hardcore. They were HXC to the freaking max, baby. Like, iconic. Denny's has this iconicism too, but I think IHOP is just America on a plate. Even though they're international. I actually listened to that entire band, <laughs> like a metalcore band's disc- discography. The Denny's people? The Denny's, yeah. What's up? What's up? What the is up, Denny's? And then they have a mosh they, pit. This in is the, how they mosh. This is how you mosh. This is how you mosh. Uh, I agree with you. I if if you were talking technical proficiency versus balls to the wall innovation, I'm taking innovation every time. If you look Me at the, too. If you look at the rest of their food canon, one Denny's <laughs> Denny's just debuted a new chicken fried steak recipe that I have yet to try. But boy, am I excited for it! Should have gotten it for you. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Um, but if you look at their other canon of food, right, they're probably serving very similar things. You get the chicken strips, you get zucchini sticks, you get onion rings, and and they're all probably pretty equal. IHOP has made some stride in the burgers game. They once did. IHOP. They called it IHOP, International House of Burgers. IHOP was fun. It was fun. Their brunch burger was really great. Um, yeah, I take IHOP any single day, um, but I do think that the money and time and effort that Denny's put into the new pancakes is very worth it. Just... Still coming up short. You did you did your part, and I'm excited for you, Denny's. And while Nicole's going to get grand slammed in a Denny's, I'm going to get a little Rudy Fruity fresh and tootie in the bathroom. <laughs> Ew. Josh, I don't know if you know this, but a lot of people have this, like, strong fear of carbs. It's crazy out there, Nicole. People scared of a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's weird, but the thing is, like, Carb-heavy foods are the foods that we, especially you and I, like love the most. They make you feel good. They make me feel good. <laughs> but I feel that same thing, which is why we have great news. Hero Bread. Yeah, Hero Bread. They're taking those typically very carb-rich foods, and they're throwing a ton of fiber in them. And I'm telling you, I have never seen macros. Nicole, you're all about the macros, right? I'm sorry? <laughs> <laughs> Macronutrients, I have never seen. There are only 16 carbs in their tortilla, 15 grams of fiber. Yeah. Not enough Americans are getting fiber. Yeah, yeah. And it like zeroes out almost? Is Something that like that. Yeah, yeah. I was looking at the packaging and I'm like, how does this work? And then they they wrote it out and it made so much sense. It's only one net carb, I guess. And I made a breakfast burrito with it. And I'll no tell way. you what, that is a damn good tortilla. Yeah, yeah. Very There's, pliable. There's like a lot of protein in it too. Yeah. Um, I am not BSing anybody. I not BS a BS out here. <laughs> I'm fully switching all my tortilla needs over to Hero Bread now. No way. Yeah. I mean, I'm always looking for a way to get fiber. Sure. I eat 200 grams of protein a day. That's a hard thing to get in your diet. And they were able to make a product that you get all of that tortilla pliability, all of that comfort yeah. that you want in a handheld food. And you're actually getting a bunch of nutrition from it, which is super rare. Yeah, and they're delicious and flavorful. Like, I'm sure that breakfast burrito was really bomb, right? Oh, it was great, but that's because I'm a great cook. (laughs) You know what I did? I did. I took old meatball mixture. Oh, yeah. And I sort of seared that like a breakfast sausage. Okay, yeah. Put a little bit of marinara sauce on a breakfast burrito. Super underrated. 
Damn, that sounds freaking delicious. <laughs> Anyways, don't give up being a breadhead. Hero Bread is offering 10% off your order. Go to hero.co and use code sandwich at checkout. That's sandwich at H-E-R-O dot C-O. Josh, I've been dying to go to Providence for like years. You know that really, really fancy restaurant that's like on the west side? Yeah, they serve like the weird sea creatures, right? Yeah, I've been <laughs> dying to go there for like years, but I just can't like wrap my head around spending that much money for like a meal, you know what I mean? I get it, man. It gets expensive exploring yeah. the local food scene. You got to find the time and energy to go somewhere new. It's crazy out there. What if I told you there's this crazy company called Cook Unity? Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. It's, no way. <laughs> it's, stop being silly. Listen to me. It's the first chef to you service delivering locally sourced meals from award winning chefs. Isn't that like so cool? Uh, no, it actually is. Because listen, I grew up on microwavable meals and mm-hmm. they've always left a lot to the imagination. <laughs> yeah. uh, but Cook Unity is the first time where I'm like, oh my God, there was an actual chef behind this. Yeah. I mean, I got Korean braised short ribs. They're absolutely delicious. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had spinach and cauliflower mash in it. Plus, it was made by a local chef. Chef Lamara, which is super cool because, I mean, we know every single chef has their own individual spin on a dish, and you can actually taste that in their meals. You want to know the best part? Ma. There's, like, no cooking required. Like, for a chef-quality, like, experience, you don't have to cook anything. You just pop it in the microwave or it's ready to go. That's incredible, man. I'm in. I'm sold. I mean, I I say that as if I didn't eat one for lunch today. (laughs) (laughs) When you're choosing a meal plan, Cook Unity has tons of different options. They got paleo, vegetarian, keto, vegan, Mediterranean, pescatarian, or no preference. Woo, no preference for the win. (laughs) You can also filter out different allergies, which is great. You pretty much customize it like a chef would. That's really, really great. Experience chef quality meals every week delivered right to your door. Heck yeah. Go to cookunity.com slash hot dog or enter code hot dog before checkout for 50% off your first week. That's 50% off your first week by using code hot dog or going to cookunity.com slash hot dog. We should collab with them on like a hot dog based meal. Like a fancy Uh, hot dog based meal. Like brulee hot dog with mm, like hot dog ceviche. What if we just do like huevos con weenie? Mm, I'm in. (laughs) Nicole, you're always looking for healthier eating options, right? Yeah, of course. Well, that's great news because I know somebody, it's a special friend, they will drop a box of delicious healthy meats right off to your door and to anybody else's door out there. Is it Butcher Box? It is Butcher Box. <laughs> you can find high quality meat and seafood like 100% grass fed beef, free range mm. organic chicken, pork raised crate free. And Nicole, I know you love the wild caught seafood. <laughs> that's right. Eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet. Butcher Box is offering our listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential. Three pounds of chicken thighs. God, I love chicken thighs. That's all I would eat for the rest of my life. Yeah. If they weren't also giving me two pounds of ground beef or one pound of <laughs> premium steak tips for free in every order for a whole year. Plus, get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash hot dog and use code hot dog to choose your free offer and get $20 off. Yeah, it's cool because sometimes when you go to the grocery store, you find yourself buying the same stuff and yeah. it's never the best quality. But Monotony. with ButcherBox, it's monotonous. With yeah. ButcherBox, you're just getting a whole smattering, a smorgasbord, an array of delicious variable meats, right? And Absolutely. that it gets you out of your comfort zone, but it's very comforting. Yeah, you get yours sent to your house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get mine sent to work. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I, like... I think I stole your chicken thighs last that time. That was you? <laughs> yeah. Darn it. Uh, you get me around chicken thighs and I'm going <laughs> to, man, I'm going to eat them. So check out ButcherBox now. Again, that's butcherbox.com slash hot dog and use code hot dog to choose your free offer and get $20 off. Sometimes the smallest changes make the biggest impact. And Trade Coffee is a great addition to your morning routine. Sure is. Trade brings roasted-to-order coffee from more than 55 of the nation's top roasters right to your doorstep. And as a hot dog is a sandwich listener, you, my friend, get a special offer. So Trade Coffee is a coffee subscription service where you tell them your like flavor preferences and what you like, the style of roast you like. They curate their coffees for you, and you can just sit back. <laughs> You oh, sip it? back. Yeah, yeah, like you coffee, it? you're yeah, sipping, yeah, yeah. but you're also... Re- yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Sip back, <laughs> relax, and enjoy. No, it's super cool because uh, I drink a lot of coffee, but I don't know a ton about it. So when people yeah. ask me if you like Ethiopian or Colombian or whatever, I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't know. But with trade, you can discover new favorites while supporting small businesses across the country. And you can personalize everything based on your taste. You know, if you want it delivered once a week, if you want lighter roast, darker roast, Nicole, you can have it all. Yeah, actually, David and I just got an espresso machine and we've been tinkering around finding exactly what kind of preferences we have Mm. and let me tell you the fruity notes aren't for me we're like deep (laughs) 
dark, chocolatey coffee people now. You like them dark roasts. You like them yeah, midnight yeah, yeah. roasts. I like it ah. when you can like taste a little bit of like that cereal note or like that chocolatey yeah. vanilla note. Like I know, I know that now because of trade coffee. I love, I love a fruity, lighter roast coffee. You do? Oh, give me them little the cherry opposite. blossoms. It's incredible. Anyways, you can jumpstart your daily coffee routine by signing up for a trade subscription. Right now, trade is offering a free bag with select subscription plans when you visit drinktrade.com slash hot dog. Baby. That's drinktrade.com slash hot dog for a free bag with select subscription plans. No, you got to say it like drinktrade.com slash hot dog, baby. But that's not the code. The code is drinktrade.com slash hot dog. There's no yeah, baby. Yeah, no, it's not. The code is not hot dog, baby. So it's it's drinktrade. <laughs> it's drinktrade. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it's drinktrade.com slash hot dog, comma, baby. Don't write comma, baby Don't write when comma, you baby. want it. It's drinktrade.com slash hot dog, baby. So last week, I welcomed our friend in the internet science dad, Hank Green, to Last Meals. Now, if you remember, we had him on the podcast way back in 2021 to discuss whether or not the ocean is a soup, and that is one of my favorite episodes of all time. But on Last Meals, we got super deep talking about living with cancer and what happens when you die. There were a lot of layers in our discussion, just like the many layers of the delicious lasagna we ate together. And boy, there were a lot of layers. We, we actually count them. It's a fun time. So if you haven't already, go check it out on the Mythical Kitchen YouTube channel when you're done here. All right, Nicole. We've heard what you and I have to say about getting gross in pancake restaurants' bathrooms. Mm -hmm. Now it's time to find out what other wacky ideas are rattling out there in the universe. Well, it's time for a segment we like to call Opinions, Opinions Are Like Casseroles. Like Before we get to your opinions, it's everybody's favorite part of the show. That's right. It's another edition of... Review a review! I was going to say it. I know. I'm so glad I cut you off. I was going to say it all funny. Anyways, this one is from <laughs> at Cups MF. Five stars to review or to be reviewed. <laughs> uh, I feel smarter when listening to this because both he is. I am now a chef, and apparently I can add critic to my list of accomplishments. Five stars to me as well. Um, mm. Ironically, no, three stars. Uh, oh, not, I not give this five stars. Beautiful. I love, I value confidence so okay. much. I love it when someone comes in and they're like, I'm a five star girl. I'm a five star guy. It's like, yeah, you are. No, I actually agree with that. I'm, I I'm like very, confidence. very attracted it's to confidence. It's important. I, it's not an attraction. It's not as I mean, like platonically attraction. attract. Like a people. You can't be platonically attracted to people. Of course you can. Are you kidding? False. I get it. Yeah, I'm like, well, I, like I gravitate towards certain people okay, but platonically. Pl platonically attract is a weird sentence. Just say, just say friendly. Why do you I don't say think so. I didn't say like attract. I'm attracted. I said like, the, uh, yeah. Attraction implies. Not romantic. You can have platonic attraction. I've never seen it. People have like an animal magnetism to them. Now it's getting creepy. Um, <laughs> Where I stand, are those pancakes? I stand, by, I stand by three stars. <laughs> I give them five. Let's get to that first opinion. So I think one thing that used to be a big old craze was the pickles on a peanut butter sandwich, right? Mm -hmm. I don't understand why that ever went out of, of fashion, if me you will. Me either. I love me some pickles on a nice, creamy, smooth peanut butter sandwich. Anyways, big fan of the show. Love y'all. Sir, your accent is the creamy peanut butter to my ears. <laughs> And your opinion is the little bite of pickles on that. Oh, my god! Um, I will say they do sound a fair bit like Zach Galifianakis from oh, the campaign. I was going to say sounds like Bruce from Family Guy. <laughs> I love I love um, your voice. You have a mellif mellifluous tone of voice, and I really appreciate Stop it. Stop with the SAT words. Mellifluous. Josh, I swear, Maggie. I'm going to get up and leave. I was deciding between it. mellifluous and dulcet. I would have loved dulcet. You should have said dulcet. Mellifluous. Oh my god. Sweet or musical? Pleasant to hear. Maggie, now look up dulcet. No, it's down there. It's a similar. It's similar. No, no, but look up dulcet. So this is look up dulcet, because I want to see how similar they are. Cause I'm getting I'm pretty good at just picking sweet and soothing. Yeah. Dulcet tones. Um oh. God, I'm good. Uh I'm like a natural, what's the thing called? It's like a dictionary, but for cinnamon. Antelope. <laughs> <laughs> the sorrows. <laughs> the sorrows. Um, peanut butter and pickles. It's. I'd eat it. It's something I've bread almost never. Man, I, in my old age, I've been getting much more into bread and butter pickles. I love. I eat a lot of pickles. I eat a lot of. I just love fermenty foods. I always yeah. have. I love pickled stuff. Are bread and butter pickles even fermented? Or does I don't know. I mean, it's they're vinegared. Yeah, they probably are. I'm sure they are. 
I don't so know. I feel like that much lactobacillus on the outside. I of mean, the cucumber, okay. The I, I like pickled things. Let me re- let me just sure. uh, redact what I said. Sure, sure. I like I like Fair. I like things that are vinegary. Yeah. And bread and butter pickles is the dessert version of vinegary foods. Yeah, a lot of people say they don't like bread and butter pickles, but I say reframe them in your mind as candied cukes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you really enjoy them. Um, my preferred peanut butter sandwich that's on the fringe is peanut butter, um, bananas and mayonnaise. That's a great sandwich. I, and I would recommend don't that. think I've ever had that, but, and I don't ever will. <laughs> but peanut butter and pickles, that is a good sandwich. Uh, you've inspired me. I'm going to have I one. want red have onions and sriracha on that. Uh, yeah, I did a great way to jazz it up. Yeah, fun. Soak the red onions in ice water first. Hi, Josh and Nicole. Love the podcast. Why? I yeah, am calling listening. to defend honey on pizza, and especially honey on pizza crust, like they do in Colorado mm. on those Colorado mountain pies. I'm fine if other people don't like this, but I am sick of being hated on for dipping I, my crust in honey. Thank you. Can I, can I, one, thank you for listening. I Two, love you. Thank uh, you. Um, is this person doing that thing that people do on Twitter where they sort of like make up a victimhood? They're uh, like, everybody hates me for this opinion and I'm the only one. I, cause I, I don't know. I have a challenge. How much hate are you really getting? Is the hate inside your own head for dipping your pizza crust in honey? Um, you made that pizza. The mountain hike. It is from a spot the- called Bojo's, where Bojo's tried to effectively force a pizza genre into America called Colorado Mountain Pizza. It was good when They're you made it. They're very thick. They have a whole wheat crust that is braided. There's honey in the dough, and then they serve warm honey on the side Pretty to good. dip your crust in. It's uh, a fantastic style of pizza. It's very different. I mean, it's similar, but also different enough to where it's very cool. Didn't really catch on as like a... Um, you know, nobody in L.A. is opening up no. a Colorado Mountain Style pizza restaurant. I mean, they can. It'll be popular for like three months, <laughs> sure. and then it'll just plummet. Sure. Um, but, yeah, I agree. The crust, to me, is a completely separate food from the pizza. Um, It needs to be treated like it. Uh, well, okay. I think you need to eat pizza crust. People that leave pizza crust on the side, I think they need to go to jail. No, it's a handle. It's a breadstick handle, and it's perfectly edible and good. It's just less good than the pizza. I know, but it's a com- it's a completion. It's like it's like doing things to completion. I don't like it. I think it's, it's like people that put napkins on their pizza. I hate it to absorb the oil. Just pizza is good. Oh, do you eat the pizza- corn husk too? I, it's it's not edible. The corn husk isn't edible, Josh. A lot of things are more edible than you think if you just really put your mind to it. Get out of here. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is I like honey. I like hot honey and honey on pizza sometimes mm-hmm. if there's a pork product to go along with it. Like I'm not going to get a quattro formaggi mushroom situation mm-hmm. and put honey on it. That's not happening. But if it's like pepperoni, those little pepperoni cups with some hot honey, ugh, yum, of course. I pretty actively dislike that. That was a trend for a minute. So uh, she's talking about two different things. One is dipping the crust in honey, which I fully agree with. To me, that's a great dessert and i i tend to not love like ultra sweet desserts do you think restaurants should have a cup of honey for every single pizza they sell yeah they do it bojo's in colorado why not other than bojo's why other than Bo- bojo's, 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 bojo's did every- because, papa john's listen to papa me. john's served garlic sauce and now everyone can got I, the garlic sauce can i tell you what it is what? it's because the bread is so soft and braided that it lends itself to being a dessert almost like a donut or like another baked good. I would dip a Neapolitan crust, but Neapolitan you? crust you need to sort of incorporate into the eating would of the pizza you? or it's too wet. Would um, you? But I, I really don't. I'm pretty <laughs> actively against, not in theory, just in terms of going into my body, mm-hmm. the honey on the pizza. I, I get it with the spicy pepperoni. The sting and all that stuff. Yeah, it was yeah. a Roberta's from Brooklyn who opened up in LA and they're very, very good. What good a stuff, good pizza. Good but I just, the honey, I'm. It's not my favorite, and I, like I, I would never honey, do it myself. I'm telling you, the pork. If there's like speck or prosciutto on the pizza, a little bit of honey, it's like, oh my god, it's like a charcuterie board. It's fun. It's fun. It's a new way to enjoy pizza. Uh, I might need the honey without the tomato. Fine. I think the tomato Fine. and sweet makes me taste vomit. It makes okay. me taste like I ate a big bowl of spaghetti and, and then, then ate yogurt land and then vomited. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of, and yeah, I've yeah, done yeah, that a lot. Yeah, yeah, I've done yeah, that a lot. Yeah, the yeah. old spaghetti yogurt land vomit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It happens. Yeah, I've been there. <laughs> Looks like worms. Hey, Nicole. Hey, Josh. Smells like pistachio. This is Vince DeBona. Just wanted to say more of a rant than an opinion. Go ahead. Have you seen where the Chef Boyardee pizza kits have taken the cheese out of the kit? You now have to supply your own cheese. The best part of those kits was the stinky cheese. Am I right? Am I wrong? Hang up and listen to your answer. 
I owe this person such a big apology because I have never had the Chef I've Boyardee never heard of this. Pizza Maker Pizza Kit. Me either. And I, I feel so ashamed because this is something that I should have done. Oh my God, they are absolutely correct. It, now it just comes with two... This, what a bad product. It comes with two crust mixes that is just a bag of flour that you presumably mix with water Dude. to create what is, I'm sure, not a very good pizza crust. And then you roll it out, and then they simply have it's a can ki- of pizza sauce. It's for kids. It's like an easy-bake oven. It's fun. Have some fun. <laughs> you sure? Yeah, but I'm looking at the cheese. Of the easy pizza. family fun. It literally says easy family fun. I, it's I don't know. Fun. Go to a zoo. Go to a zoo for some easy family no, fun. No, get, get the bowly pizza crust. Okay, but no, Design it's fun. It teaches, it teaches kids to mix and to be patient probably and wait. I like it. What kind of cheese used to be in this though? Stinky now cheese. I'm fascinated. He, says he stinky said cheese. stinky cheese. Was this in the refrigerated section? Okay, they say section? grated Parmesan and Romano cheese topping. Okay, my question is, do you think this was in the refrigerated section? No, no. it's a can of sauce. Why would it be? Yeah, so the it was cheese. a grated Parmesan and Romano cheese topping. God, if they if this is shrinkflation, it's like how Gatorade went from 32 ounces to 28 ounces. I'm sorry about But the that. bottle got cooler, and so I didn't mind. God, <laughs> priorities bottle's more straight. ergonomic. Your priorities are straight. But that's, you know, that's a reduction of, what, 12 12.5%, you know, 32 to 28. Good math. Thanks, Josh. Good um, job. SATs. <laughs> Right, um, but math portion is my worst. But if they just took the grated Parmesan Romano cheese topping out and kept this the same price, which I imagine they did, that's a big win for Chef Boyardee. It's on sale. Uh, on buy Walmart. them up. <laughs> buy up the world's supply. I don't want to. So, I don't have kids to do this with. I have my niece and nephew, but they don't care about these things. David's anymore. a big kid. That's super infantilizing, and you should apologize. <laughs> infantilizing, look at you with say the so- big words. Say sorry. David, I apologize, but I do. you do have a youthful... Say sorry to my husband! You have a youthful joie de vivre that I really do Keep appreciate. My and I think you really know... Out your blanket <laughs> mouth! Okay, you are not a child. You're going to be a lawyer. I'm going to need you to bail me out of jail one day. He's a really good candidate for that kind of stuff, Dave, I promise you. <laughs> Leech on. Um, they, you know what they call young, uh, young attorneys? Ambulance chasers. I don't think that's a young attorney thing. I think it's like someone who's like trying to like get their name out. I, I think it's a, strictly a personal injury attorney thing. Oh, really? Thing. Yeah, because oh, yeah. they literally drive, yeah. Ambulance chasers. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. All right, next video. <laughs> Hello, Josh and Nicole. Love the podcast. I personally believe that macarons are just overrated. At Cannes? They're, I don't want to offend the Francais, but uh, they're just uh, shells of nothing. Saccharin, just Saccharin, overhyped and overrated. They d- deserve to be buried d- deep in a dungeon away from humanity, never to be seen again. That's it. Thank you for listening. Where, where do you think they're from? Because they were they were real fluid. I think with, they're uh, French, French, Cana- French Canadia. Oh, could French have been. French Canadia. Actually, or they're just like from America and they just studied French. But I, I definitely caught an accent. I was wondering if there may be a Spaniard who happens to, you know, uh, dabble possible. in a bit of uh, Francophilia, if you will. That's <laughs> where you go into a Denny's bathroom after you're ordering the... Uh, anyways, um... Macarons, I think by definition, they're overrated because they Aww. went through such a big moment. And yeah. anything that relies on the color and the aesthetic and being in a big pastry it's case. Pretty. What's the spot downtown? Let. Huh? Bottega Louis. Bottega Louis. They got the big pastry case. I used to <sighs> walk beautiful. by there. There's people pissing on the road, smoking cigarettes outside. But there's Bottega Louis shining with the multicolor. Do you remember it? It was so iconic. Is it not there anymore? No. It's just, when do you ever go? Oh, I, yeah. I used to live closer to downtown, so I used to skateboard to my yoga studio. God, I'm too L.A. Um, but they do taste very good. I, I do love, love macaron. Them. It's the, the texture of macaron, which is not to be confused with macaroon. Very Passover friendly. Very Macar- Passover friendly. One time, Maggie brought macaroons to the office, and I laughed at her. <laughs> Do you remember that? That's for Passover. It's so that. funny. She literally was walking and like holding it like a purse, and I'm like, "Did you bring those for Passover?" And she's like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Okay, give me." One. Um, if anybody wants a quick etymology lesson, the reason so macaron in French became macaroon in English is the same reason that the word ballon became balloon. It was a way to differentiate um, American 
English from, you know, uh, French, I suppose. So Thank we sort you. of just added O's. But the reason in France a macaroon is made with whipped egg whites, sugar, and almond paste, right? Or almond flour. Mm -hmm. And that's how it gets that signature texture that's almost kind of wet, and puff, crispy, yeah. and crunchy. And I, I'm a sucker for texture in baked goods, and that's great. An American macaroon, which is big in the Jewish American community, yep. because they sell Manischewitz kosher macaroons. They're so good. They are just dense and sugary, and instead of almonds, it's using coconut meat. Yes, yes, yes. And I believe Martha Washington was maybe the first person to publish God a recipe. Bless America. <laughs> With coconut macaroons. Wow. Which is very interesting. I think it was Martha Washington. could have been somebody else. Well, it makes sense. Yeah, like coconuts Almond were, coconut. you know, we'd just been to Hawaii we and, you know, it. America, all that stuff. I think we didn't annex Hawaii till like 1850s, 1840s. Yeah. But but the point remains, we, we're still there, so tropical fruits are coming into America. Um, I prefer American macaroons because I grew up on them and I love the density oh. and the coconuttiness and I love it. I would love to create a macaroon macaron or a macaron macaroon. <laughs> macaroon? I would like to combine the two somehow. I don't know if so I can. Just make a coconut flavored macaron. Okay, well, that seemed pretty easy for you. Or like put a bunch of almonds in a macaroon. That wouldn't be nearly as good. Mm -hmm. um, I get why you I get why you would call them overrated. I I'm curious. Think, I don't think they're overrated. I think they're fine. I think they had their moment, but now it's kind of like evened out. Yeah. And Earl Grey macaroon is delicious. Macaroon Ooh. is delicious. What What do you think? Why? And I would be curious, uh, Monsieur, if you were to call back and uh, tell us what your favorite French pastry is and what you think. Not even French pastry. Your favorite pastry is that it Paris you think breast? should be. You like Paris the Paris breast? breast? Um, <laughs> and tell us what you think it is. What do you? What's your favorite French pastry? Um, I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> I actually do love a, a peri peri breast. It's a laminated pastry. It's filled with like a chestnut cream, right? Uh, yeah. Let me let me look. Let me actually look up French pastries. Oh my god! I know my answer. What is I know it? my. It's a can, it's a cannelle. Oh, cannellis C are cannelle. I I used to make. Are, you know what I used to do? Ma. I used to make handmade cannellis, and right before they would come out of the oven, I would shove a dulce de leche truffle inside, oh. and then it would—it was the most delicious thing in the world. You would serve the cannelli, and then you slice it in half, and it had this ooey gooey oh. chocolatey dulce de leche oh. filling, and it would—it—it was—it was really good. Oh, <laughs> eclairs also are great. Shoe shoe pastry is fantastic. A cannelli for people that don't know, it's like a. It's a super wet, eggy batter that you cook very, very high hot, temp. Yeah, and you yeah, have to yeah. cook it in cop. What's supposed to be cooked in like a special copper mold? Yeah. And they say that it's not copper, but it's just like dense and eggy and caramelized, sugary, and but also kind of wet. I absolutely love it. But eclairs, I absolutely love. There's something called a religieuse that is like two cream puffs stacked on top of each other. Uh -oh. um, but I, I love choux dough filled with creme pâtissière. Yeah. But I understand why macarons got you know their day in the sun. I love I love Napoleons. No, I hate I hated Napoleon. My dad hated Napoleon. It was my dad's birthday recently, and you know what I got him? Huh? I got him a Napoleon is a millefeuille. Millefeuille. Millefeuille means uh, one it's, thousand leaves. Yeah, I it's just it's just like puff pastry with a uh, creme patisserie in the middle, and I hate that little almond topping that they do the white and black almond topping. Mm. Ugly. I like just like. Pastry and cream, pastry and cream. Not like whipped cream, but creme pat. Um, I think we may have to do it's an episode. Our French pastry is overrated. Okay, fine. We can. They're not even French. They're Austrian. They're Austrian. Uh -huh. Austro-Hungarian. Yeah. But also it was all different there. But you know I mean? it was my dad's birthday and I got him two two custard porn cheeks, two cream puffs, and two Napoleons. One with cream, one with custard. God. Ooh. <laughs> I want to go. It's so funny how much our parents influence our tastes. I was going to say, I need to get a pastry right now, but we got some leftover Denny's pancakes. Woo! And going Same diff. Ham on them. Uh, well, that's about all our time. Thank you so much for stopping by the podcast. We got more podcasts coming up if you like that kind of thing. We're yeah. here on YouTube if you're watching it on YouTube. Yeah. If not, that's, that's okay. Yeah. Call us, 833-DOGPOD1. We love to hear your super incredible voices because we're tired of hearing ours. Buy a t-shirt. It doesn't even have to be the podcast t-shirt at mythical.com. Buy, buy any our stuff. Did I tell you I switched t-shirts to the guy outside the bar on Saturday? You did? You did the jersey swap? We did the jersey swap. <laughs> it was completely organic. What kind of shirt were you wearing? I was wearing, so you know my like, it's like a orange and black striped polo? Yes. That I accidentally have two of because oh. I was supposed to wear that for the photo shoot for the book. Uh-huh. And then I lost it. Uh -huh. And then I went back to Express and rebought it and didn't mm. tell anybody. Uh -huh. 
But then I found it. Julia put it behind the cat carrier uh, uh. in my closet, so I didn't see it. So anyways, I have two of these shirts, and I'm outside this bar. You know, we closed it out. It was a lot of Scarga, actually, and it was great. I we loved dancing, all the Scarga. So fun. Uh, and this guy just goes, hey, man, cool shirt. And I go, yeah, thanks. And he goes, hey, I'll trade you my jacket for it. And he was real drunk. And I was like, dude, like for real, I have two of these shirts. I will gladly trade you uh-huh. for that cool jacket. Did you take a picture with And them? then somebody took a picture and I don't know where it is. So oh if you were involved in the jersey swap outside of La Descarga on Saturday, whatever, what? 119 or something, mm-hmm. please try and find me. And then his girlfriend was like, hey, he's really drunk. This is a nice jacket. And then I was like, I don't even want anything in return. I just need a shirt that I can wear home. And so the guy took off his t-shirt and then another dude was like, hey, do the jersey swap picture. What was the jacket? It wasn't like nice, nice. I don't even think I would have worn it. Like with no disrespect to him, we just have different styles. What was it like a jean jacket? Uh, well, not jean, but definitely some sort of fabric. Like kind of cool, like multicolored, a little bit Gen Z looking. He turned, he was he was younger than me. Did it have like a cherry on the back? I don't think so. Oh okay. Yeah. Are you still here? Oh, see you guys. See ya.